Hello everyone, in this video on the topic of plant transport, we're going to be looking at the difference, the key differences between a source and a sink. Now these are two terms, source and sink, that we really use when looking at translocation, which by definition is the movement of soluble carbohydrates, so we're thinking things like glucose and sucrose, and amino acids via the phloem. Now the phloem is part of the vascular bundle in the uh, plant and I have done separate videos on the differences in structure between xylem and phloem but ultimately it's almost like going from A to B. A is the source, B is the sink and we're moving these soluble carbohydrates and amino acids through the phloem from source to said sink. So let's just make a little note of that to begin with. So ultimately this topic revolves around the transport or movement of soluble carbohydrates. So we'll just put soluble carbs, and that's to include glucose and sucrose, plus amino acids in, and I said what's really key is that this is taking place in the phloem. So part of the vascular bundle. So let's look at what a source and sink actually are in relation to translocation. So let's deal with source first of all. Now on the left we've got a definition of source here, a spec definition. Now there's a reason why I've put source at the top and sink kind of in the bottom right of the corner. And it's kind of misleading because some students would think that the source and sink can be really far apart but that isn't always the case. They can actually be right next to one another. But also helps with this video give me a bit of space here. So source, let's take source, it is the region where the substance is produced or where it enters the plant. So let's think of some examples there. So glucose and sucrose, for example, are produced in the leaves in photosynthesis. So we're going to just shade in one particular leaf here. So let's go for this green leaf. And we're going to imagine that in this particular leaf, we have produced some glucose. Let's just label that glucose. In fact, we'll put in some sucrose there as well. Glucose and sucrose. So that leaf is cast or classed as a source. So we'll label that an S here for the source. Another source could be uh, at the root hair. Because nitrates enter the plant by absorption into the root hairs. And by definition, the sink isn't just the region where it's produced, but where a substance can enter the plant. So maybe we've had some nitrate entering the plant by absorption into root hairs. As you may know, that nitrate will provide a source of nitrogen used to ultimately help the plant produce some amino acids, which we can then in turn use to form proteins that the plant will use for growth. So we'll colour that in purple there. That will label as a source. In fact, just to separate it from sink, we'll use SO to represent source. We'll add an O there. So there's two examples of sources. Regions where substances are produced or entering the plant. Now, in contrast, if we were to look at a sink, a sink is at the bottom here. So now let's look at the sink. The sink is the region where the substance is stored or where it's actually used in respiration or growth. So, for example, anything that we've produced, we may want to move around the plant in the phloem and store it away. Our starch, which is our storage material in the plant. We might want to relocate some of that uh, glucose and sucrose, for example, and use it in respiration in other parts of the plant and for growth. So let's label, or let's think of some examples on this particular diagram again. So we've talked about sugars uh, glucose and sucrose being made in a leaf. Now sugars may be stored as starch in the roots or the stem. So let's take the roots. Let's highlight root for example. Let's just colour this particular root, this orange one. This here, this root could act as a sink for these sugars. So we have labelled glucose and sucrose and if we were to just draw a diagram let's draw this in red maybe we're transporting those sugars 
to the root for storage. Maybe if we highlight in another colour, maybe let's go for a sort of yellow one, maybe this region here. We're more specifically we're looking at the stems within this trunk we can highlight that in red also because maybe some of this sucrose and glucose has been stored there so this region once again in the stems of the trunk this would be classed as another sink so you can see we've got two sources one of the root one of the leaf but now we've got a sink here a sink here as it says in the definition, any region where a substance is going to be stored or used in growth for respiration. So let's look at that one. So we've talked about sugars being stored as starch in the root or stem, but also the products of photosynthesis, so glucose for example, can be carried to growing buds, to flowers, to leaves and to fruits for respiration. So perhaps, and if we highlight another region here, Let's take another leaf for example, let's highlight this one. So perhaps some of that glucose made over on the right side of this picture, I mean this is clearly just for diagrammatic purposes, but maybe we're actually carrying some of that uh, product of photosynthesis, some of those sugars, to, as we said, to other leaves. So just and this leaf therefore over to the left would become yet another sink so you can see there's multiple arrows that we could ultimately draw on this uh, particular picture because it, it should be clear that parts of a plant may act as a source and a sink at different times so we've got a leaf for example over on the right hand side acting as a source but at the same time we've got another leaf acting as a sink so it all depends on what it is that we are producing as this definition suggests and what it is we're doing with what we're producing or what it is that's entering the plant and where exactly that is going now going back to this idea of the parts of a plant acting as a source and sink at different times um just as an example, translocation can occur from storage organs such as the root tubers to all parts of the plant. So what that means is that if we colour say this particular root in blue, let's just say, let's say we've got some root tubers coming off this particular root, this is ultimately where we are storing some of our starch in our example. So let's just say we've stored some starch, this is yet another sink. So we can put another red arrow, let's just say that some of this glucose and sucrose went to this root as well. We then might want to transport some of those substances to other parts of the plant. So then this sink would also become a source. So there's the key difference between a sink and a source. The source is the region where a substance is produced or where it enters the plant and the sink is simply the region where that substance would get stored or is ended up being used for respiration or for growth. So in this video we looked a little bit about the difference between the two in terms of plant transport. There are other videos on the vascular bundle more specifically, also on root hairs in a bit more detail on water transport and some A-level videos to take it a little bit further about translocation and exactly how these sugars are moved in what's called the mass flow theory or mass flow hypothesis. Okay, hope all that helps.